what's your relationship with Joe Rogan like? I have not seen Joe in quite some time. Um, I, the first few times that like I saw him and I couldn't even believe that he knew who I was. Like he went out of his way to give me props, to show me love. I got to do a video interview with him uh, backstage is one of his shows in like 2010. And he unprompted showed me a lot of love. The only issue that I've ever, and even till this day, like I see some people being like, Oh, enough of Joe Rogan. Like, are you crazy? They have one of the most famous broadcasters on the planet calling UFC fights. Like Joe should have that job until he decides that he doesn't want to do it anymore. He's a massive asset to the UFC and it would be crazy for them to ever part ways. And I don't think they would ever part ways as long as Dana White is around. The only issue that I ever had with him was in 2016, the Monday after my banning, before I was unbanned, he went on his podcast, incredibly successful, and obviously not as big back then as it was now, but it was still gigantic. And he said this whole story that I was brought into a room and told not to say anything, and I was shown the promo. None of that ever happened. A complete lie. And, and I know that it came from Dana White to try to like justify what happened. None of that ever happened. There was never a conversation. I got this just like any other reporter gets news, two sources, blah, blah, blah. Actually, for this one, it was three. No one from the UFC, no one from Fox, no one from, I wasn't even working for Fox anymore. I had no knowledge that it was even going to be broken that night. I just had a massive story and the fight was in a month and I didn't even know who the opponent was. I just knew that Brock was coming back. That was it. So uh, I, I felt like that was very damaging to my credibility and to my story. And as I just said earlier, till this day, people parrot that. And yeah. I think it's because he said it. So I, I responded on Twitter and I think I've talked about it in other places. I really didn't appreciate that because it was just very, um, you know, it was very reckless to do this. My life, I, I thought I was done. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. So that, that really hurt me since then. You know, I've, I've heard him talk about me on his show and he's been nice, you know, no issues, no pot shots, no nothing. And I've never, uh, thrown one his way. And in fact, he has my uncle on his show quite often. My uncle is a professor named Gad Sad. Uh, and it's kind of wild that he's on all the time. I've never been on and and that's totally fine. Um, I don't think I will ever be on. But uh, so to answer your question in a long winded way, like, do I have a relationship with him? I don't really think so. He's been on my show back in the day. I've yeah. obviously met him. He knows who I am. We've talked about it. I just was bummed about that moment. But like, I'm, I don't hold on to these things. Life is too short for that. So in the moment I spoke up about it, but as I sit, sit here talking to you today, like he is incredible at what he does. He's an inspiration really to all media guys, especially if you want to be independent podcasters, whatever. And I think he's a huge asset to the sport and the UFC. But you, you never had a conversation with him about the Brock Lesnar report in the aftermath. Yeah. In the no, aftermath. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see him. I didn't talk to him. I, I tweeted about it, but right. we never really crossed never paths after that. Probably <clears throat> like, yo man, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. Um, I didn't have his number at that time. So 